Finally, the wait is over. The much-awaited FIDE Candidates Tournament has been resumed today, guys, in Russia. And it is a great pleasure to see these top 8 players competing for the only spot where they will be playing in the World Chess Championship title match, guys. We all know this thing that the winner of this Candidates Tournament will be the challenger against the reigning World Chess Champion Magnus Carlsen. The tournament will be held in Dubai very soon, guys. And if you ask me personally, then I am rooting for our boy Anish Giri in this tournament. Well, do let me know in the comment section who you are rooting for. That will be kind of interesting. Well, after the first leg of the tournament, Ian Nepomayachi and MVL, that is the Maxim Witcher Lagrev, were the leaders in this tournament. And today, in the 8th round, the leader of the tournament, Nepo, was playing against our boy Anish Giri. Well, I was expecting a very tough and very fighting battle where Anish Giri will come up on top. But nothing like that happened. But still, I will say that this game was very special because of the theoretical battle. You can say the opening battle which happened in this game. On the 16th move, Nepo decided to unleash a novelty. After that, Anish Giri played a little bit safe, you can say. And the game was settled into a draw. But what really happened in this game? What was the opening played and everything? We'll be looking at in this video, guys. So stay tuned with me till the end and understand all those intricacies. And if you like this video, don't forget to comment and like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. So let's begin. In this game, white was Ian Nepomayachi. He played e4. Anish Giri was black and he decided to play Sicilian. He played c5. Knight came on f3 square. Then he decided to play the classical variation. Maybe, okay. It depends upon white what he is going to play. d4, c into d4, knight into d4, knight f6 and now knight c3. Well, in this position, uh, there are many alternatives, but Anish decided to play e5. And now the game converted after knight d b5. Well, knight into c6 is also one of the options, but uh, knight d b5 is the main option here. d6, now white uh, gets the bishop into the game with bishop g5. Now the bishop is uh, pinning the knight on f6, okay. This knight is kind of uh, making some trouble here on d6 because the queen is also there. So Anish decided to kick away this knight with playing a6 move. The knight goes behind. Now he plays b5. Well, just to let you know, guys, this is a very famous opening called as the Skreshniko variation. Okay. Or you can say Sicilian Pelican variation also. Here, white has the multiple options, but the most principled way to play in this position is to grab the center. So white plays knight d5, attacking the knight on f6 with two pieces. Now here you need to decide something because if you allow your opponent to exchange on f6 then your pawns will be doubled and uh, you might be in trouble. So Anish plays a very simple move, bishop e7 supporting the knight on f6 and unpinning the knight. Now there is a threat is there that is the knight into d5, c into d5 and then bishop into g5 maybe and if bishop into e7 then knight can capture it back. Okay, These are things so white captures on f6 getting rid of this knight. Now bishop into f6. After this, you can see that white has a very nice knight or you can say a strong knight in the center of the board. And how to deal with this knight, we are going to see. Anish plays very carefully and very cleverly, I'll say. Now here white plays c3. Here c3 is played because the knight wants to come on c2 square followed by maybe e3 and consolidate the position of the knight on d5. This is the idea. Guys, we should always see the ideas behind the moves whenever we are playing. And through these top level games, we can understand all these intricacies related to the opening. Okay. So here Anish played rook to b8, obviously with the idea of playing b4 at some point. Okay. Obviously, uh, one move was there like castling was there. Then white will play knight to c2 and then bishop g5. Here, the main line is to play a4. Okay. And after this, uh, if you capture on a4, rook will capture on a4. Now the pawn on a6 is being attacked by two pieces. Okay, we are supporting, but uh, it is better to play a5 in this position. The bishop lands on c4 square, rook b8 attacking the pawn on b2. Here white plays b3 and now king h8 followed by the moves like f5 and so on. And this is the main line in this case. Okay, this was the theory and there are multiple games played in this line. If you want to study this opening, I would recommend you to study the games of uh, Formal World Chess Champion uh, Vladimir Kramnik. He has played this line quite often from the black side. Okay, but uh, Anish decided to play Rook B8 in this position, and the knight goes back to C2. Obviously, the knight is heading towards the E3 square. Okay, now uh, Anish uh, decides to play Bishop G5 because he is getting ready. If the knight lands on E3 square, then he will be very happy to capture it on E3 if it's needed. Obviously, it's not needed right now, but maybe. If it's uh, needed, he can play it. And the point of playing bishop g5 is also to play f5 at some point. So he is making some room and he is also controlling this diagonal. 
okay two things are there now again as i mentioned earlier a4 is a perfectly fine move in this position even a3 is also possibility but here nepo decided to play in a very tricky manner he plays g3 okay his idea is to play h4 at some point and uh, kick away this bishop away okay so no black plays castle not afraid of h4 this kind of moves white plays h4 bishop goes to h6 square that is the only good square you can say because if you come back to this square then what is the point of playing a uh, bishop f6 or follow bishop g5 no point right we want our bishop to be there on this uh, long diagonal so that our opponent will not be able to long castle also he will not get the piece in the center with knight e3 comfortably okay now a3 is played fine no problem now white is playing in a very uh, different and dubious manner i'll say here i will even say like bishop g2 was a very comfortable move followed by castling and uh, the game will be normal but he plays a3 just to try to get more control of the b4 square so anish uh, improves more control on the b4 square by playing a5 okay so here bishop g2 followed by knight e7 was already played in uh, good games okay and uh, those games are already studied by many players so you can see like bishop g2 followed by knight e7 was played in vitugu game in one of the online tournaments against savian okay but here nepo unleashed the novelty which he has prepared that was queen to d3 the point of playing queen d3 is like he is getting this rook uh, on a1 to come on the d1 square and put more pressure on the d6 square well here we need to decide about something what to do okay black king is already castled he is safe here but white king is in the center so maybe the possibility of f5 was there which can be played here white can go for bishop to h3 f5 was not played in the game but it was a possibility i am saying and after f into e4 queen into e4 white is trying to get more control in the center by controlling the light squares okay and this is a perfect color strategy game guys where white is trying to get all the control on the light square black is having more control on the dash square you can see that these pawns are there on the dash square this is also dash square bishop which is an active piece here in this position black might go for bishop into h3 rook into h3 followed by knight e7 and try to get rid of this knight on d5 well white obviously has the option of playing knight to e3 in this position and the game will be very interesting but Anish Giri wanted to play in a different manner. He first wanted to get rid of this uh, knight on d5, so he plays knight to e7, trying to action this piece. Well, knight e3 was played, supporting this knight on d5. Maybe knight into d5, knight into d5, and still playing f5 was a possibility to create more at, uh, attacking possibilities. Obviously, we know this thing that if the game is opened up and uh, the side which will be having two bishops will be getting more uh, advantage, so. The logical variation from uh, or the move from white side might be bishop to h3 trying to just exchange the pieces especially the light square bishop here because if you exchange the light square bishop the knight on d5 will be a very strong piece the octopus knight you can say which will be controlling all the important squares in the position. So Anish did not go for that thing he played bishop into e3 trying to just get rid of the important knight in the center of the board here knight into e3 was played and now he plays bishop e3 further controlling the d5 square. Always remember this thing guys, whenever you play e5, you weaken the square on d5 and especially the backward pawn on d6 is a weakness. So we have to control about all these squares in the game. Okay, so all good players understand this small small details related to the middle game and they try to cover all the holes you can say. So rook d1 was played, putting more pressure on d6, there is only one uh, good move, rook b6 uh, just controlling this uh, or you can say supporting the pawn on d6. Bishop h3, okay, white wants to exchange the bishop, Anish Giri says no, I don't want to exchange, I, he will play bishop to b3. Bishop c4 was a possibility definitely in this position, white uh, needs to play knight into c4, b into c4, queen into c4 and rook into b2. And uh, here white might go for the castling. Well, I don't know why exactly he did not play this move but uh, as per my understanding I think that... Uh, he doesn't want to leave the pawn on uh, d6 just like that because it is a weak pawn and it might come under pressure after some time. And the square on c8 is also controlled by the bishop and white seems to be okay because uh, a5 pawn is also one of the weaknesses. So maybe he wanted to play solid so he plays bishop to b3 just attacking the rook. Rook goes to d2 square now he plays uh, queen c7 getting the rook in the game is he is preparing for this uh, maybe he can play rook c8 or rook b8 we will see 
uh, with the ideas of b4 because black needs to get some counterplay in this position so white very calmly castles in this position completing the development now the rook which was sleeping on h1 is now in the game okay so anish plays rook f b8 rook comes on c1 square he is trying to discourage uh, black from playing b4 because if you play b4 it is a possibility but the white will be on top after a into b4 a into b4 c4 now the bishop is being attacked he doesn't have that many squares so bishop uh, a4 will be played now again kicking away this bishop with b3 and bishop needs to go to e8 square and after rook c d1 i will say that the pawn on d6 is uh, in uh, tremendous pressure obviously this bishop is still not that great and the uh, knight is uh, trying to come on this squares but we have already covered this square so black may be a little bit uh, okay but we have to be careful playing from the black side it is only white who is playing for the win in this position and definitely this is not the position you would like to play in the candidates tournament that too in the eighth round where you have resumed so here anish plays a simple move rook to c6 just holding on to the position okay uh, white plays bishop to g4 now he plays h6 still waiting for their opponent and here nepo played bishop d1 he doesn't want to exchange the piece, he plays bishop e6. Again, Nepo plays bishop g4. And here, Anish had the option of playing bishop c4, maybe possibility. And the uh, game might be interesting after all these uh, moves, but okay, he decided to just uh, play it safe and uh, just hold on to the position. And the game was drawn after bishop to g4. Well, this whole thing happened uh, quite quickly in just two hours, guys. And it was a very interesting battle, I say. There were many possibilities which we understood from this uh, very short video i hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, i'll be making more videos about uh, other games also guys so stay tuned with me uh, in the on our channel uh, subscribe to my channel and we will be meeting very soon in uh, next video and till that moment take care goodbye and love